the world. The African continent is host to about 30 top oil producing countries. The continent produced about 8.7 million barrels daily in 2014 alone. The oil find in parts of Africa in the early 2000s brought to the fore a yawning human resource gap that needed to be bridged. It was at this point that Talo Oil PLC stepped in with the Talo Group Scholarship Scheme. It was about supporting capacity in country, supporting young people, and, and it actually fits in ex firmly with, with what we do in our core business and our core competencies. So it's the opportunities that the young people are seeking, and it is filling a gap, uh, a well-known, a defined gap that exists in, in the market, especially in emerging oil, oil and gas industries and economies. The scholarship scheme was to build capacity in areas where Talos host countries had significant skill gaps, especially, but not exclusively, around the country's oil and gas industries. They wanted us to look at a program that would provide uh, capacity building and development of not only individuals, but also looking at institutions. Um, uh, to improve in the area of oil and gas. It is aligned with Talo's aim of supporting long-term socio-economic development in countries where it operates. So my name is Nane Fuadin Chebaita. I'm a reservoir engineer at Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. The Talo Group Scholarship Scheme has been an amazing opportunity for not just myself, but several people across Africa. And engineering is just being able to see the science at work and I just love especially you know when you drill a well and you find what you thought you'd find or you see something that explains something. I love being able to link the facts and the results. As one of the few female engineers in the oil industry in Ghana and beneficiary of the Talo Group Scholarship Scheme, Nana Denchi's role now in Ghana's oil and gas space cannot be overemphasized. We look for the oil, we say to you, okay, you've gone and drilled this, you've got this information. We put together everything that comes from the geologists, everything that comes from the petrophysicists, the geophysicists, the geochemists. We put together all that information and we're able to say that, okay, so based on this information, this knowledge, we can estimate that if you put a well right about that location, you may find something. Her studies at the Harriet Watt University in the United Kingdom not only made her a better engineer contributing to Ghana's oil industry, but like most of her counterparts, it is a story of self-discovery. I've learned to enjoy being with myself. I've gotten to know myself so much better. I've found so many interests, my love for the theater, my love for sport, all the good stuff. It, it's, it's been totally amazing. It is one that gives her hope about the role of women in the budding oil and gas industry in Africa. I mean, the year that we came, I believe I was the only female engineer. And over the years, we realized that we have more female engineers coming in for national service. And this year has actually been one of the years with the most female engineers in the office. You cannot underestimate what it means to have a role model and a role model that you can absolutely relate to, someone that looks like you, someone that sounds like you, with a similar background from you, because it tells you that you really can do even more than what the person has accomplished. A bigger number of women. That so is exactly what Rita Lebuta represents in Kenya. Now a renewable energy consultant, the environmental engineering Talo scholar is passionate about mentorship and mounts several platforms, not only to share her Talo scholarship experience, but to champion renewable energy. As the statistics show over 600 million sub-Saharan Africans still do not have access to electricity. The Talo scholarship played a very huge role in my career. Before I went for the scholarship, um, I would say my mindset was a bit closed, closed in. There are things that I went on to discover during my scholarship, during my master's, that I had no idea. I did not know that my career would catapult to this level where it is right now. Here is another story of discovery. But most importantly, she has helped bring electricity to hundreds of Kenyans living in rural communities. It's still a mystery to a lot of people within my community. How do you do this thing? How do you go about it? 
And when you look at the solutions, having studied after having done my master's, these are very achievable solutions. Right now I'm running programs around mini-grid uh, development, energy, mini-grid energy projects, which basically is about electrifying the marginalized communities and off-grid areas. And all this has happened because of the achievements I had through the scholarship. I think with more me mentorship, we would be, I, as a person, would be able to encourage other young women to do the same thing. It has not been an easy road for officials of the British Council who managed this project with Ghana as the regional centre. The British Council has been managing scholarships now for over 40 years. Um, it's an area that we have a lot of capacity in and um, we're recognised in terms of the work that we do with higher education. Um, representing UK universities and UK interests where education is concerned. The extent of success achieved with this venture meant a huge investment into planning. We had to visit um, the targeted communities such as in Ghana, the Western region, um, and visit with chiefs and local opinion leaders and to find out really what their views were around the industry, what um, their expectations were from, from Tullow. We had to engage with um, our colleagues in Manchester to look at how the scholarship was going to be handled from the UK side, um, engaging with UK universities to find out um, the kind of courses that were on offer that would benefit individuals who were part of the scheme as well. We also had to work with a lot of data um, looking at various applications. We received, um, I think in the first year when we run the scheme um, across all the different countries, we received uh, in excess of 20,000 applications. Also working across all the different countries and bringing together all the individuals and making sure that the processes were consistent. And um, we also had to ensure integrity as well because working with individual data and um, at times being approached to compromise on that integrity um, and also ensuring that we had to stand our ground whenever those approaches were made. With the Talo Group Scholarship Scheme running in about 10 countries, project managers have had to stay in touch across borders with their counterparts. That is made easier through the program management expertise of the British Council riding on the back of technology. In the various countries have sufficient information on the program and there was um, seven countries in sub-Saharan Africa and three in South America. Um, Sub-Saharan Africa we've got Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Mauritania, uh, Ivory Coast and Gabon. And then in uh, South America, there was Uruguay, Suriname, and Guyana. Are you able to see the, um, the A typical meeting could be nerve-wracking, as it requires meticulous studying of tons of documents online. A bit of humor sees the team through it all. Yes, in Kenya, we have um, uh, two lecturers from the University of Nairobi. One out of three Talo scholars graduated with distinction. Uganda and Kenya are perhaps the most excited about the number of distinctions recorded in the group they recruited. The fact that you were able to see a total of 76 Kenyans receive the award and they were able to travel to the UK to join over 4,000 other international students in various UK universities. And of these 76, half of these uh, have received distinctions. We got the right people on board. We regularly receive positive feedback on the robustness and transparency of our selection process. Um, one year we received 7,000 applications and you can imagine whittling 7,000 down to 20. Um, but something that the client and the candidates themselves valued was that our selection process was based on merit and performance rather than um, who you know um, or who your father or mother for that matter might be. The fact that majority of our scholars received a distinction is something that we're very proud of. 
in Uganda. Organizations, some have been promoted in their former places of work. And for us, that is a testament to how, um, how important and how valuable the opportunity to study in, in the UK in, first, in the first class institution um, was to these individuals. Talu Oil, together with the British Council, have made the dreams of many of such brilliant people a reality because of an overarching quest to touch the heart of human resource. Even though the core objective of the scholarship was to develop human resource in the areas of oil and gas, discovery continues to be the main theme of the transformational process. My name is Joshua Imbora and uh, I'm a beneficiary of Talu Scholarship Scheme in 2012. Uh, prior to the scholarship, I used to work with um, a mining and exploration company in Burkina Faso. I went to the University of Salford, where I studied petroleum and gas engineering in Manchester for one year. Um, the good news about this scholarship is that I actually got my current job whilst I was still studying in the UK. So if I hadn't gone to the UK, I wouldn't have gotten uh, my, my current job. That is uh, being a geologist with Oricon, which is a South African-Australian merge engineering firm. I've been working with them since um, 2013, when I returned from, 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 from the UK. And then three months after that, I started this farm because traveling to the UK really opened my eyes a lot about what agriculture means and, what agriculture, and how agriculture can shape economies. Like Nana Denchi and Weta Lebuta, who discovered so many different traits of themselves, Joshua Anumbara, a geological engineer, would learn immensely from life in the United Kingdom about food quality and resort to agriculture as a second job to, in his words, provide real solutions to societal problems. One thing I learned through Talo Scholarship Scheme when I went to the UK, engineers are problem solvers and not just engineers. They identify where problems are and they design solutions and implement them. Which, after studying, I realized that one of the biggest problems we have in Africa is food shortage and hunger. And if that is a problem, and as an engineer I can address it by doing it differently, I see a very strong link between being an engineer and being a farmer because they are both very key problem solvers and required. The Talo Scholar now produces for a Swiss-based company and a multinational grocery merchant, ShopRite. Um, the international exposure has kind of given me a chance to understand what corporate world is like and quality standards, not just local but international. Um, for that reason, we do quite a lot of different things on this farm that match international standard. For instance, our irrigation is water from a borehole, which is potable water and drinkable water. We have, due to our hard work and quality of, 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 of delivery and farming methods here, we managed to get a contract with a Swiss-based company in Ghana called HPW, of which we are supplying about 20 tons of pineapples every week. We also recently got a contract with ShopRite to produce vegetables, mainly chili peppers and then cucumbers, and that informed the installation of two greenhouses which we have, and we are looking forward to install more of this because the market with uh, ShopRite is huge. With over 15 acres of cultivation and 30 acres of land acquired, he doesn't only encourage best agricultural practices, but the benefits of the Talo Group scholarship to him extends to many in the community where his farm is located, with job opportunities and access to potable water. What more could a grateful community say? Mr. Joshua built two borehole. The borehole that Joshua's company built in this community has changed things for us. I am also a farmer, and we used to walk for a long distance to fetch water. Now we can have clean water for our household chores and even for irrigation on our farms. This has been the community's source of water for as long as they have existed until Joshua came on board. With such gratitude from communities like this and scholarship beneficiaries, Talo Oil and the British Council can look back on their investment and smile in fulfillment. Last year, Tolo rolled out a new socio-economic investment strategy and it's focused on three areas, so capacity building, um, focusing on STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths. Um, in, in this area, we will be supporting scholarships, but it will very much focus on in-country institutions. 
Um, the second area of focus is around um, strengthening the local economy and this is support to local businesses and SME development. Um, and then the final area that we're going to focus on is around shared infrastructure. So this is the infrastructure and logistics that we need for the company, such as water and seeing how we can extend that out um, you know, to the, for the benefit of the communities. In Uganda, daughter of a single parent and now mother of three, Hanifa Lubega, sums her experience in one phrase, a renewed mentality to demand accountability of country leadership. We started this um, just a few people, two people, and then we thought, okay, maybe we need to move to the next level, let's employ two people. So we've contributed to the employment of some of the Ugandans, and I think that's a very big uh, achievement. And we are still employing. We have also guided a number of people, uh, those who are studying. We have some people who are at the university and are doing training. The scholars are spread across various parts of Africa and the Americas. In Francophone Africa, there is the story of Ivorian economist Jean-Michel Gba. Today, I am an officer at the Ministry of Finance. I work as Director General for Economic Affairs. In 2012, I was part of a scholarship to do an engineering program in France. I pursued that course because I wanted to sharpen my technical and human skills. The knowledge optimization course, which is what I studied, allows me to apply my knowledge in quantitative techniques. And it's my knowledge in quantitative methods that allows me to continue in my work as an economist. En technique quantitative pour pouvoir euh, toujours continuer mon métier d'économiste. Alors donc c'était plus euh, la formation était the education I had in France was more job-oriented and it is what has helped me to focus my career now more on systems optimization, transport logistics and everything in quantitative analysis for decision making. Quantitative pour l'aide à la décision. Thank you first. And Martina Alvarez is a beneficiary from South America. She now works with the Ministry of Housing, Territorial Planning and Environment of Uruguay. My experience was great. I always tend to address environmental issues, taking that into consideration as the most important, but this MSc taught me to have more uh, subjects over the table when addressing environmental problems. The success story of the Talo Group Scholarship Scheme is evident in all the countries where it was implemented. 99% of scholars returned to their home countries to support with development, while 97% of them gained employment. Welcome to the Talo Group Scholarship Scheme application process. The British Council relates these results to the process of recruitment. A process officials describe with one word, maybe two, rigorous and competitive. Talo Scholarship Scheme is strictly by online application. So there's a dedicated website which receives applications, usually between a period of four to six weeks. We have three different stages of interviews. We have so many numbers that come through even after our sifting process in order for us to cut those numbers down and to get the right candidates. The next stage will usually test the course selection and university selection. Why have they selected the course that they want to study? Are they a good fit? And the final stage, which is called the final interviews, is where we profile the candidates. That is certainly a thing that scholars could relate to with fulfilling nostalgia. But after five years of implementing this project, what is the progress report and what's next? We have um, successfully administered the scheme to over 400 individuals across all these uh, countries and um, they are all doing amazing, amazing things. There's, there's just so many stories um, to tell and I know there isn't enough footage or, or, or real to, to cover all of the stories. Over 50 scholars are either entrepreneurs or involved in entrepreneurship. With this in mind, the scholarship has a unique component designed to connect alumni of the program. 
um, we added career support services two years into the scheme to support um, alumni as they returned from the UK um, transitioning back into the job market in Kenya. So this included supporting um, returnees in uh, curriculum um, writing, in interview skills, in personal um, identity and also in um, business support services should they decide to start their own businesses. My name is Irene Dankwa and I'm the alumni manager of the Talo Group Scholarship Scheme. Hundreds of alumni like Irene Dankwa are strategically placed in what she calls one big family. Most alumni will, will always ask what can we do for our community because the aim of the scholarship was to build our capacity to uh, come and contribute to the development of our country. So you get alumni who are also going out there seeing what they can do to help. People are doing uh, a lot of community work. People will go into schools uh, to teach. We have one, one of our alumni uh, who was even adjudged the uh, next Einstein from the ambassador for it and he he, what he does is he he's promoting STEM education. We, we have colleagues, we have alumni in Kenya who have mounted the international platforms, who are being captured by the international I mean, community for their work. A lot of people who are doing great stuff in their ministries. Talo alumni have been recognized for their various roles upon returning to their countries with awards both locally and internationally. Over 30 scholars received various university and faculty awards. Gamali Ajaho and Ahmed Ajay Teria are only two examples of the award-winning alumni base of the TGSS. My name is Teria, Teria J. Ahmed. I studied an MSc in Environment, Health and Safety at the University of Salford in Manchester. Before I left, I was already working in that sector, consulting in the sectors of Environment, Health and Safety. So as I came back, I went back doing the same things, except that this time in a, in a more enhanced way than it used to be. So initially, before I left, I had been doing a couple of audits in some workplaces, and I saw the kind of conditions under which people work. People basically didn't understand the relationship between productivity and environment within which they work. And when there are accidents, they didn't understand the kind of impact it has, even on those who are not involved in the accidents. So when I came back, I was fortunate enough to get some partners to get into the field and educate people about the relevance of environmental health and safety and get them to implement systems that will protect their workers in their, in their workplaces. My initiatives in helping young people develop the right skills to be able to solve the kind of challenges and problems that we face in Africa, I believe is very important because over the years, more and more um, minds, more and more hands, more and more hearts will be strengthened to be able to join us, to be able to um, continue tackling various challenges. Beneficiaries cannot help but say thank you. We are extremely grateful for the opportunity and we hope that it's something that will be continued in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, British Council. Thank you, uh, Talo, for the opportunities you, you, you've given Ugandans and we hope that this can continue. A, a big thank you to the Talo Scholarship and British Council for administering this scholarship and all the follow-ups since we started in 2012. I feel like the Talo Scholarship really was a blessing in disguise, way more than I actually thought of it to be. We hope that the, you know, the scholars will um, continue to succeed in their chosen fields, um, that they will become the future leaders and influencers, um, but most importantly that they continue to impart and share the knowledge and skills that they have gained through their studies you know, for the benefit of their country. This group of the Talo scholars speak for the hundreds of scholars all over the world.
Thank you.